If you're looking for the ultimate breakfast treat, then you've got to try my English muffin recipe, 10 times better than store-bought. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. These English muffins will be ready in a snap, so let's get started. I combined half a cup of water with three quarters of a cup of milk, two tablespoons of sugar, and now we're gonna pop this into the microwave. We want this to get nice and toasty, i.e. 110 to 115 Fahrenheit before we add the yeast. Always give your mixture a good mix before taking the temperature because I thought that sugar gets a bit hotter than the milk. Right now we're gonna add one packet of yeast right inside. Give it a little mix. We're gonna set this aside while we measure out the dry ingredients, of which there are two. For these English muffins, we need two and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. That's 330 grams. Just right. I'm also gonna add in one teaspoon of salt, and that's it for the dry ingredients. Give it a little mix, and then once that yeast is nice and bubbly, we can combine the two. Normally, we would use a dough hook for dough, but not today. We're using a paddle attachment. This dough is not like normal bread dough. It is so loose and slack. That's how you get the nooks and crannies. Anyways, this isn't gonna work. Just use a paddle attachment. Once your mixture is nice and frothy, add three tablespoons of melted butter and one egg without the shell. <laughs> All right, mix that up. Add the dry mixture into your stand mixer. Let's pop on a paddle attachment. We're gonna add this liquid mixture in while the mixture is going on like stir, lowest speed. This batter is gonna be loose. You're gonna look at it and say, whoa, 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 this isn't right. But special English muffins are very different than a normal muffin. We're gonna increase speed to medium and mix for seven minutes or so. All the kneading is happening in this bowl. I'm not gonna do anything on the counter. I'm gonna set a timer and do some dishes. Okay, it's been seven minutes. Look at the difference in this dough. It's totally transformed and it's so much more smooth and silky. Still very slack, but look at this. All right, so here's the deal. You have two options. You can let this rise for an hour or so, or I find it's better to let it rise overnight. English muffins are always the very best fresh, so you can do all the, the prep work the night before, then in the morning, just bake them up. Transferring the dough into an oiled ball. <laughs> and be generous with your oil because as you can see, this dough is quite sticky. It actually took a while for me to develop this recipe and be really happy with it. English muffins are one of those things that I never thought were amazing until I made them the right way. And then they're like, oh my gosh, the most delicious thing ever. So cover this up, we'll be right back, but you can do this the night before. Let's pull that dough out of the warming drawer. Look at that risen masterpiece of loose dough. Here's the plan. We're gonna flour the surface we're gonna work on. Turn this upside down. Take your time. You can use a little bit more flour on my hands. And then just pat it down to be about an inch thick. The secret to a nice English muffin is not making it too thin, so let it keep its shape. I lined a pan with parchment paper. I'm sprinkling some corn flour, cornmeal, <laughs> or semolina on here. I'm using a three inch circle cutter. I'm just going to cut carefully, and then we're gonna transfer this carefully <laughs> onto our um, baking sheet. And you can see it's sticky, so we can just corral it back into shape, place it right there, and then repeat the process. In between, you're gonna add flour to your cutter because this is gonna get totally gummed up and not cut really cleanly. Your dough is soft, it's pretty delicate, so just be, be gentle with it. And if it flattens out a bit too much, you can just push it back into shape. It's not gonna be this flat because this has a second rise of just half an hour, but in that half hour time, it'll really puff up a bit more. I'm using a little spatula or um, offset spatula rather to transfer these because I don't want them to stretch out. <gasps> I forgot to flour my cutter. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I have all these scraps left. They're not garbage. We're just going to corral them back together. Cut them out one more time. There you'll have one big muffin and maybe a little tiny extra scrap. I'm gonna cover my muffins up with just a sheet of parchment paper. 
you can place this in a nice warm place to rise up or just leave them on the counter half an hour and we'll be right back. After a short rise, my English muffins have gotten larger, a little puffier. Now we're gonna set a big skillet over very low and let it warm up slowly. Once you can feel the heat, when you hover your hand over, don't touch, it's ready to cook. Carefully place your muffins onto your hot-ish pan. Use a spatula to carefully and gently scoop your muffins up. You can cook three or four at a time, or even one if you wanna go extra slow. Once your muffins are placed, you're gonna add a cover on top, and then they're gonna cook for five to six minutes. At the five minute mark, you can check your muffins. Take a peek, and this looks good. So carefully flop it over, just like that. They're not super hot, so you can actually use your fingers to place them back down carefully. That's how you get those finger marks on a lot of the English muffins that people would make at home. Cover it back up. We're gonna cook it for about four to five minutes or until the bottom is golden now, and then they're ready to pry apart. If you want, you could bake these in muffin rings. I'll show you what this looks like. This is just a circular cookie cutter, but it's the same thing. You'll just cook it directly in this and then plop it out afterwards. Cooked in the muffin tin, they have a crazy perfect edge and they rose really high. I do like the look more of this, the homey handmade kind. This is gonna be the best thing ever with a lashing of butter, maybe a little bit of jam and a bit of coffee. Pry them open with a fork. There's no need to toast a fresh English muffin. It is the best thing ever. If you like this video, check out my breakfast playlist. It's like the perfect bite. Crunchy, soft in the middle, all those nooks and crannies ready for the butter. I'll see you in the next video.